Brady did it. He took the Professor Arnold Eric fermenting foul stench nasty pus and mucus forming food challenge and he won. So what this is, is Eric in the Mucus Diet Healing System book, he offers an experiment to somebody who either wants to be super heroic and eat a bunch of bad food, throw it up and then evaluate it, or take all the food that you would have eaten, put it in a pot with some water and mix it up and heat it up and let it sit and see how nasty that's stuff is. Now, yeah, we know it's not anatomically, you don't have the acid in there and all that kind of stuff, but this gives you a perspective of how nasty and filthy these combinations are. So if you're new here, I'm Professor Spear. I practice something called the Mucusless Diet Healing System by Professor Arnold Arad. I've done so for over 22 years. I've totally transformed my life, overcame numerous ailments, and I've helped thousands and thousands of other people do the same exact Thing. Go down below, do me a huge favor. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and hit the like button. YouTube doesn't like us much. Their algorithm hates us. Truly appreciate it. Have you ever had any questions that you wanted to ask me personally? You have any ailments that you know the Mucus's Diet Healing System will help you overcome, then I want you to join the Mucus Free Life membership. When you do, you're gonna get direct access to me. I do two coaching calls per month. All your you bring your questions in and we're gonna go through everything. We have two accountability calls per month. So that's four calls per month. And I've never done anything like this because before you would have to pay three or four times what you pay for this program to, uh, just to have a half hour or hour consultation. Another great perk, we have our own social media platform called Mucus Free Social. This is a place where we are not censored. You can get the support. We can talk freely. You also get access to the menu and recipe library. If you like some of these recipe videos, videos we've been putting out, then you're going to love the recipe library, which has a whole lot of things in there that is not up here. Exclusive mucus free menu and recipe library. You get access to all of it immediately. As soon as you sign up, we're going to be adding new recipes, new content, new how to stuff, possibly every week, but definitely every month we got new stuff going in there. We also have exclusive training sessions, workshops with me, all kinds of fun stuff planned for the membership. I truly hope that you will join us. Click the link. This is where you're going to get the structure, support, and accountability that you need. That's what we all need to be successful practicing the mucus diet healing system. My opinion is reading the book alone is not enough. So many people have read the book, but they didn't have the structure, support, and accountability to keep them on track, to decode certain things that were still confusing. That's what the membership is all about. You're going to have access to a community of people that actually care about you and care about your success. There's nothing else out there that's like this because there's nothing like the mucus's diet healing system this is one of one you want to master it you want to get the benefits out of it then you're going to want to join the mucus free life membership click the link right now see you in there in the Mucus of Diet book, Eric says, make a personal test if you are not fully convinced. Eat a regular dinner and one hour after eating, get it out of your stomach and you will have a sour fermenting mixture of a terrible odor, reminding you of the garbage pill, and which when fed the hogs causes even these animals to slowly become sick. Or, if you do not care to be so heroic, try the following experiment. Next time you sit down to your Sunday dinner, have the menu served for an imaginary guest. Empty their portion in a cooking vessel using the same quantities as you are eating and drinking yourself. Stir thoroughly. Then cook on an oven at blood heat for not less than 30 minutes. Place a cover on the vessel and leave overnight. When you remove the cover in the morning, a distinct surprise will await you. So, an average meal about a decade ago when I was a child, young teenager, this was where I would go for my, not even Sunday dinner, pretty much every day and then on top of the candy that I'd pick out, I'd get a nice 7-Eleven Slurpee. This is the spread. This is exactly what would be an average meal. And I'm not joking, like this is serious. So I even added a slice of pizza in there just for, just for kicks. So we add everything into the pot. And then uh, I tried to mimic mastication a little bit here and, you know, really get in there and, you know, see what, what, I was eating and then yeah I put it all into the pot I think I added a little bit of water not much uh, most of that's just slurpy goop uh, and then yeah that looks horrible so uh, blood heat for not less than 30 minutes so I got it around 97 for most of the time 
sealed it in a freezer Ziploc bag and I left it overnight and oh man, what, <laughs> what, what that smelled like. It was like seven children vomited all their Halloween candy up and it just looked like a disgusting swamp of acid slime waste. And I was not expecting how powerful this experiment was going to be. I know it's a thought experiment. It doesn't exactly mimic the human body, but wow, it just really, really put into perspective. That was an average meal that I had growing up. So yeah, I've come a long way and that is my homework for this week. Shout out to Brady. Nice work doing the experiment. And again, don't get caught up. We're not trying to be a scientific experiment. It's giving you a perspective of how filthy we become because hydrochloric acid is not taking care of all that slushy day in, day out. It's not taking care of the cookies, chicken and beef and all the stuff people eat day in, day out. It's not taking care of all that. Over time, as these residues build up in the body, it starts to degrade the body prematurely ages the body it causes damaged cells that people ultimately call cancer down the road or they call any manner of ailments and illnesses it starts to mess your kidneys up and your endocrine system gets thrown out of whack all of these things happen because our colon is getting gummed up with this waste that becomes acidic fermenting and nasty and we become as Eric says walking cesspools of filth and from one meal you can see how how much cesspool is created from one meal you start to get a perspective of how much work we have to do in terms of cleaning ourselves up because whatever the some of the it's like some things get eliminated other residues remain but some of this stuff gets pushed and becomes part of the body is built into the body and we have all of this waste and obstruction that is at a cellular level and the acid everything start to works together to shut our body down the lymphatic system shuts down everything starts to shut down so this to me is an excellent example, an excellent experiment, whether you just do it as a thought experiment and you think through it, or they, I don't think they teach this anymore for dogs, but they used to teach that for animals where you go to the bathroom in the house, you sh shake its face in it uh, as a way to teach it. Like I said, I don't think they recommend doing that anymore. That's not the proper way to train a dog, but there's a lot of humans that I think probably need that level of training when it comes to level of filth that they're putting in their body. You start putting things in perspective all this processed stuff and the chemicals in them and you throw Doritos in there and slushy there's no way if you're thinking from a natural point of view that that makes any sense to mix these things together the animal kingdom no one's they're not mixing there's a some animals that will mix stuff together the omnivores that are if they're actual real omnivores but they're not they're not making all this crap that we make. put things into perspective I appreciate Brady for doing this experiment. I hope you get something out of this because this is where the rubber meets the road. You just need to understand pus and mucus forming foods are the foundation of human illness. If you want to get well, if you want to live a long life filled with vitality without the pain and the suffering that the average person goes through because they don't know this law, they don't abide by this law, the pus and mucus forming food law, then this is what it takes. You gotta learn however we can learn. So if it takes, if you're finding yourself hard to get the discipline to do this and maybe do this experiment, put your face in there and breathe that in for five minutes to get a perspective of why you do not need to eat those mixtures. There's a reason why we are so sick. It's not genetics. It's not some virus. We're eating these constipating pus and mucus forming foods that build up over time and cause all manner of chaos in the human species. I think you all for tuning in and until next time peace love and